on this episode of It's Me or the Dog, Victoria enters a household divided. TV says no men allowed. The Shelton family is split down the middle. The boys have their dogs, and the girls have theirs. It really is male versus female. Junie B, their four-year-old toy poodle, hates men. She growls, barks, and bites. Son Spencer and Dad Joe have had enough. That is my spot. I wanted to get rid of Junie B from the get-go. I wouldn't mind smacking her. Yet the women in the household cherish Junie B. I love Junie B. I've never seen a dog do that before. And the whole family has forgotten about Apple and Zuzu. Come on, stop. Who are left on their own out in the yard. Can Victoria rescue the Sheltons? If you put me on my back and try to hold me down, I'd bite you. <laughs> and bring men and women together again. I'm shocked that you've let this behavior go on for so long. Victoria Stilwell has over 13 years experience training dogs in Great Britain and the USA. Now she's headed to the Shelton's home to help tackle Junie B. Expecting a scared dog to behave like a stable dog isn't realistic or fair. Getting angry at a fearful dog will not help to improve its behavior. In fact, it'll exacerbate the problem. Before she starts training, Victoria will first spend a day observing the family and their dogs. All right. Hello. Hello, Victoria. Hi. Come in. I'm Joe. Hi. Good to see nice you. Nice to meet you. Hey. 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 Welcome. This is Junie B. I can hear the growling. I walked into the house and there was this tiny little poodle in Andrea's arms growling at me. And I could see very quickly this was a very scared little dog. Is she shaking? Uh-huh. Oh, bless her heart. Hey. You don't have to bless her heart. It's yeah. Okay. Oh, oh, really? You don't have to. Oh, you like it that much, then, do you? Well, sometimes. She's not terribly fond. No. Okay. No. All right. All right. Well, let's get through with her. All right. Back. Come on back. Yeah, we got her from a foster home. She liked the mother and the daughter in the foster home, not the husband. So we had a little bit of forewarning, but we thought we can handle it. Tell me, tell me, tell me then the problems you were having with her. Well, clearly in this house, there's a divide between the males and the females. She didn't like my son from, from minute one. <laughs> Junie B's biggest problem, however, is with Joe. If I'm coming home from work, she barks at me like I'm intruding on her territory. <laughs> Over time, I mean, we're three years into this thing, and my son and I have tried and tried and tried. You know, at some point, you just sort of give up. Joe told me that he can't handle Junie B. She growls at him, or she runs away from him, or she bites him. <laughs> Joe seems to be taking this very personally. In the early days when we had her, I would try to grab her and hold her in place. Well, I got bit. When you tried to stop her, did you lie her on her side? I think I tried to lie her on her back. And then she bit you. Sure. If you put me on my back and try to hold me down, <laughs> I'd bite you. <laughs> Joe tells me that he has had dogs for years and has never had any problems. And now here comes this dog that doesn't want to have anything to do with him. I think, you know, the ego has been hurt a little bit. Typically, if I walked into this scenario, I'm just coming in from any other room, yep, 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 oh. right away. When okay. I enter the room. Why don't we try that? For sure. Okay. With Joe outside, Victoria finds out more about the division. So she likes the girls, but she doesn't like the boys mm -hmm. in the household. We've become this uh, two part household. This is the girls' dog, and those are the boys' dogs, and never the two shall meet. Okay. So. <laughs> All right. For the last three years, Joe has been on the sharp end of Junie B's dislike of men. This is how he's greeted. Oh, there's a little bark. Junie B was very uncomfortable. She was trying to back away. She was practicing avoidance. She wanted to get the hell out of there. The opposite end of that spectrum. Well, I'd like to see the other dogs, so can we go Absolutely. outside and see out, them? Out, out here. All right. To compensate for Junie B's hey. rejection of men, Hello. last year, the family bought two terrier mixes. This is Apple. Well, this is Zuzu. What are their food bowls doing outside here? Do they live out here? They do. They live out here. They come inside it every night. OK. But but they're jumpy. Destructive. Destructive. Mm -hmm. And they're going to dig. They they're dig. diggers. 
During their days left alone in the backyard, the terriers have chewed up the patio railing, rocking chairs, and dug countless holes in the ground. Apple and Zuzu, they're in the yard for 14 hours a day. So after a while, it becomes boring. And does Spencer, does he, does he play with them? Does he? Not enough. Yeah, he's yeah. not going to like that answer, but he. Not enough. Not enough, no. And we have not uh, licked the voice command thing. Oh, what, so they don't listen to you? Oh, gosh, no. If we go outside the gate and they're not on a leash, anything could happen. Apple and Zuzu, they've had no training whatsoever. They don't know any language because they haven't been taught. So, of course, they're not going to respond to Joe and Andrea. They don't know what Joe and Andrea want of them. None of the family's three dogs get regular walks. And when they do, it's impossible for Joe to leash Junie B. She's going to go for a walk. All right, hold on. Oh, no, 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 Whoa! 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 All right, so when I lace her, no problem. OK. OK, you want to go for a walk? Come on. Let's go for a walk. Yeah. So she walks fine with you, but doesn't walk fine Great walker. Notice she's staying on that side, primarily because of me, I think. Yeah. And then you want to pass off? OK. You take her. All right. Come on, Junie. She's right there. Come on. Come on, Junie. Let's go. Come on. Come on. Come on. <laughs> when Junie B realized that Andrew had passed the leash to Joe, she stopped. She didn't want to walk any further. OK, can you switch off then? OK. Come here, girl. So she didn't. Come here. Well, here, come on, on, this way. OK. Hey, Junie, look. All right, we're good again. So what, what would happen if I? Just took the leash. With Junie? Yeah. I don't know. I wanted to see if I could walk Junie B. If really Junie B's problems lies in the fact that she does not like males and she's more relaxed and comfortable with females. I'm thinking it wouldn't work. Uh-oh, <laughs> it worked. You're the bad guy, Joe. You're the bad guy. Good girl. She did walk with me. And that gives me an indication that it really is more male versus female. <laughs> she likes me better than she likes you. <laughs> There's no question about Victoria's that. Victoria's moving in. Junie B is one very stressed out, very anxious, nervous little dog. I think that she has had something in her past that has made her scared towards males especially. And she is demonstrating her fear and her discomfort very, very clearly. Once the kids get home, Victoria learns about Spencer's frustrations with Junie B. My mom and my sister get this love, and we get the aggression from her, and I don't think it's fair at all. Abby, what do you think is going on in Junie B's head? I think some of the fault is Spencer's because he's always shooting rubber bands at her. Tell me, tell me about these elastic bands. Uh, yeah, I have these um, rubber band guns. They just shoot little elastic bands. They don't hurt much. But I never shoot her. I just joke you around. You shot her yesterday. No, I didn't. Yeah, but. I feel sorry for Spencer because this was supposed to be his dog, but it's a dog that will just not allow him near her. Hey, I understand you're frustrated. Totally get it. I would be too if I was in a house with a dog that growled at me for three years. Try to bite me, but you're not going to make things better. Junie, right. you ready to get to bed? One of the biggest problems over the last three years has been Junie B's reaction to Joe in the bedroom. She's very at ease. Oh, she says, I like that. Yeah. All right, Joe, come up. And we're going to see a sudden shift in mood. <laughs> Junie, what's the problem? It's my bed, Junie. The bedroom was fascinating. What I don't understand is why Andrea and Joe have waited for three years to get a trainer in. Guilty as charged, both of us. 
I wish we had addressed it sooner and we could have spared ourselves a lot of a lot of issues. There's been so little effort to understand why Junie B is behaving in the way she is. You're never going to get anywhere until you understand why the behavior is occurring. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has observed the problems in the Shelton family's divided household. All right, come on, Junie. She's right there. Come on. Now it's time for her to tell parents, Andrea and Joe, where they've gone wrong. I'm shocked that you've let this behavior go on for so long and that this huge divide has occurred, boys versus girls. I think it's frustrating for Spencer to see Junie B be fine with Abby and not for him. <laughs> Spencer wanted a dog and you've got her from a rescue situation. But her foster has told you that there was a problem. And the problem was she didn't get on well with the males of the house. That there should have been a red flag. Yes, ka -ching. It Yes, it should have been. You should have not walked but run from that. I mean, do we need to get rid of Junie B? Well, and is the... well hold on. Now, as much as I'm intrigued at that prospect, it's like moving a dirt pile. I mean, you're not going to give somebody else our problem. Now, she's a damaged dog. She's had six years of this behavior. Six years deeply ingrained stress, anxiety, aggression. But she is the most beautiful signaler I've seen. She is talking to you and talking to you in her body language and with her growls. She is wearing her emotion on her paw. Her heart's out there for everyone to see, and that's a good thing. Because Spencer wasn't getting on with Junie B, you felt bad, and then you went and got Apple and Zuzu as a sort of consolation prize for Spencer. Yet, these two dogs now just spend their life living in your backyard, and you really haven't done anything with them. So no wonder they're not gonna listen to you. What do you expect? We have a lot of work ahead of us, so are you ready to do this training process? Because it's gonna be a long one. You ready? <laughs> no, I'm ready. I'm still anxious and nervous. The goal here is to get this thing fixed, and if we do, and I'm part of the problem, I'm I'm happy to accept that. You ready? I'm ready. Okay. I'm ready. Let's do it then. Okay. Right. Victoria starts off the training with a lesson on personal space. Everybody has, I call it a space bubble around them and you let people that you know and you love into that bubble. Dogs also have a space bubble around them, but we humans are always invading their space without being invited, and that causes so many problems, especially for a nervous dog. That's your space bubble. That's your space bubble too. Let's say you don't know me, okay? Now I want you to react like Junie B reacts, when I get too close for comfort. Whoa. I'm stepping back from that. What about, Spencer, if I do this? Oh, you're such a cute little boy. Oh, hello. Oh, hello. Uh, yeah. It's strange. A, you haven't given me permission to come into your space. You certainly don't want to be touched by somebody who you don't know on your head. So that's what Junie B's going through because she is having people invade her space all the time. She is having people coming up to her and smiling. Hi. Oh, what's that? That she just sees my teeth. Also, I'm staring. When Victoria came into my bubble, it just felt strange and that I thought, no, well, why are they coming into my bubble and why are they doing this to me? I feel unsafe and I wanted to run away. How'd that feel? Uh, very intimidating. You can make it easier for her by doing other things. First, I could approach just sort of with my side body because that is smaller. Then I could approach like this, the look and the look away. Look, look away. And what you're actually doing there is you're talking dog. They avert their eyes. It's no threat. The stare is a threat. Aversion is not. 
Abby and Spencer each take a turn at using the side body approach. Fabulous. So now you can tell your friends about space, how important it is, and what they should do when they come over to your house. One frequent visitor to the house is Spencer's friend, Samuel. Victoria wants Junie B to start building some positive associations with the boys. Spencer has in the past got very frustrated with Junie B, and I think sometimes he's taken out that frustration on her. It was important to illustrate, A, just what the world is like from Junie B's point of view, but also to say, you know, this is how you can develop a relationship. Abby, can you bring Junie B in? Hi. She loves food, and that's great for us because we can use it. Victoria entices Junie B out of the safety of Abby's lap with a small piece of hot dog. Such a good Then has the boys do the same. And this is just building up a positive association for Junie B that, you know what, Spencer and Samuel are the source of good things, not bad things. Now, one more thing. Do you want to just lie down on the floor on your stomachs? Like okay. this. Now, when I stand up, I look pretty tall from down there, don't I? Imagine living your whole life being much smaller than everybody else, having these huge, great big feet tramping past you, and you don't speak this weird person's language because you're a different species. You don't know that I'm not going to be threatening. A little daunting, huh? Mm-hmm. A little. OK. A little. That's what Junie B goes through every day. So, Spencer, when you do get frustrated with her, try and remember what the world is like from her point of view. It was interesting to see Junie's point of view because I never thought of Jeannie being that small and her seeing the world around her as this, and it was an eye-opener for me. Having briefed the kids on some basic rules with Junie B, Victoria turns her attention to the family's forgotten terrier mixes. Andrea and Joe have done very little training with Apple and Zuzu. In fact, Andrea told me that she doesn't think that Apple and Zuzu even know their names. So I just want to start off doing some name recognition training. All right. Now, you tell me that you don't think Apple and Zuzu know their names. We're not sure. OK. Come here, Apple. 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 Come here, Apple. So I just want to do a simple name recognition game, and you guys can do this as well. All I'm going to do is I'm going to say her name and treat her. Zuzu. Zuzu. Good girl. What I did is I waited for her to look away from me. I called her name, she looked at me, and I gave her a treat. Okay. Zuzu. <gasps> Good girl. Zuzu. Training with Apple and Zuzu, we have to go back to basics because they don't know anything. And I think they're going to learn pretty quickly. Zuzu. Good girl. If you don't stimulate them mentally and you don't give them lots of physical exercise, all of that energy can go on to negative behavior, such as digging and chewing. When I finished the name recognition training, it was time to go on to a simple sit training. I'm just going to hold a treat in front of Apple's mouth. And she has to work out how she's going to get this out of my hand. I want her to put her bottom on the ground. Good girl. Oh, my. Good girl. Good girl. Good girl. Now, what, were you pushing back at all? Just, no. uh, just raising her head a little bit. Okay. So that's how you get them to sit. I love it when. I see people really enjoying their dogs. Good girl. And seeing that, you know, their dogs do have a brain and they do respond and you can communicate with them. Good, Good girl. girl. Well done. Good well done, girl. Joe. Fantastic. What I'm seeing is it, it's not that they weren't smart, it's just that they were not trained. I think the sky's the limit. We're, we're going to get a lot of payoff and, and a lot of enjoyment from interacting with them. I think it's really fun. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has been teaching the Shelton family to respect Junie B's personal space. That's your space bubble. Victoria now wants Junie B to respect the Shelton's personal space. I want to teach Junie B not to growl at you, not to bark at you anymore when you come into bed. Amen. <laughs> That's going to be something. Yeah, it's going to be something. Junie B's had three years of growling at Joe when he's come to bed, so this is going to be a very difficult habit to break. So I'm going to direct you through this. 
you and I, Joe, we're gonna go outside. Then you're gonna come through the door. As soon as you hear Junie B growl, mm -hmm. you put her on the ground and ignore her. Oh no, so she's not gonna be able to be on the bed? But it's a huge reward for her to be able to sleep next to Andrea. But when Joe comes in, she growls at him and she barks at him. Now, if she barks or growls, she's gonna be put on the floor and that is not nice for her. Let's give it a try. <laughs> we didn't last long. Wait for five seconds. OK, Joe, you and I are going to go out again? Try it again. Oh, OK, I get it. Okay. Good. Is it good? This could take a few tries. After three growls, Victoria wants to send Junie B a stronger message. Mm -hmm. Can you give her a little bit of a vocal reprimand now? Okay. As soon as you hear that growl, up and down. Okay. Uh, Victoria made the comment, I have all day. And she even said, you know, sometimes it takes 20 tries or more. And it looks like Junie B could break that record. I thought it was going to take all day. I just didn't see uh, Junie B breaking down on this one. Uh, eh. She delayed a little bit this time. It's getting there. Nope. Eh. Eh. Ten minutes in, and Junie B's growls are starting to come later. So Victoria wants to encourage these signs of good behavior. I'm going to give you a few treats now. If you get to the bed and she still hasn't growled, throw a treat onto the pillow. OK. Eh. I think she's finally realizing this is naughty behavior because her body language is changing. Right. Get the picture. It's Joe's 15th attempt to lay on the bed. Amazing. When we finally got to that point where Junie B came in, no growl, no bark, laid down. I mean, it felt good. It was more of, man, we had just achieved a goal. You think eventually she'll actually anticipate him coming to bed? Like, yay, Joe's coming to bed. Exactly. From now on, Joe has to come armed with a few treats when he comes to bed. And I don't think it's going to be long that Junie B is going to look forward to his arrival. Now that Junie B doesn't automatically growl at Joe, Victoria wants to help her to stop fearing him. I want to teach her that hands are a good thing. So I'm going to teach her the touch command. Junie B is frightened of Joe's approach. She's frightened of the hand coming towards her, and when he does extend his hands towards her, she growls, snaps, runs away. This is teaching her, you know what, pressure's taken off. You can make your own decision about going up and touching Joe's hand rather than the other way. Hi. Oh, is that tasty? Touch, good girl. And are we going to say touch? Yeah. I remove my hand behind my back just so that it's a novel thing again for her when I present it. Because if I just keep the hand out there, she doesn't know what to do. Right. Touch. Good girl. Very good. All right. So now, Joe, I'd like you to do this. If you okay. can get down on the ground, sit cross-legged, I'm going to give you the treats. OK. Yeah. Thank you. Touch. Good girl. Good girl. Touch. Good girl. Good girl. That little brain is working hard. She now knows. Mm -hmm. This part of the training was very successful because Junie B picked up the touch command very quickly. It's teaching the dogs that the approach of a hand means something good is going to happen to it and not something fearful. Mm -hmm. And that's what it's all about. Victoria's aim is for Joe to be able to start walking Junie B. That means he has to learn how to leash her. I think it's better for her to actually wear a harness. Yes. This is going to be much better for her delicate throat, so you're not walking her on a collar. 
you're walking her on a harness. Um, secondly, it's going to be much easier for her to have you leash her by going on her back and not around her neck. Ah. Uh. Okay? That makes sense. So, um, I'm going to give this to you okay. so that you can put that on Junie B. Joe has never successfully leashed Junie B, so going into this technique, I had my doubts. I thought this might be the one time Victoria Steelwell will not be able to train a dog. Yeah, I can't just get it quickly enough. Come here. Come here. Look, there's more there. As I hey, it's okay. yeah, good girl. There, oh, she got it. Ah, oh, you know what? I got it. I got it. This is going to make it easier. Keep the treat in your hand. Let her kind of bite it in your hand. Mm-hmm. Okay. And then do it. Okay. Now your turn. Okay, Jeannie. Yeah, good girl. Good girl. There you go. Hey, yeah, yeah, you're leashed by Good daddy. Good girl, and you got so many extra treats you left to <laughs> Yeah. All right. Now, that was she has to walk on the leash with you. I've said before that patience is not my strong suit. Right. And, and Ginny was nervous. The pressure was on. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has helped the boys in the Shelton family to build a bond with Junie B. Now she wants to put the training to the test and see if, for the first time ever, Joe can walk the dog. Joe is not able to walk Junie B. As soon as she knows that Joe's got the leash, she puts the brakes on. So I have a few things up my sleeve that I think is going to help the situation. OK, so come up with me, Joe, here. Come here, take the leash from me. Andrea, drop the leash now, but just walk there, OK? Is it working? Yeah. Has she noticed? Not yet. <laughs> She's just sticking right to your legs. OK. But Joe's got all the leash in his hands. The fact you're there, though, is very is comforting for her. This is definite progress. Definite progress. OK, let's turn back. Okay. I'm so proud of you. OK. Come on. <laughs> I've never seen a dog do that before where it really is like a toddler like a grabbing onto the leg, right. saying, just stay with me, mommy, stay with me. <laughs> Come on, GDB, he's a Come good on. girl. Come on. This is so much better than yesterday. I mean, how would you explain it? She now knows that Joe's got the other end of the leash. Mm -hmm. You're here still giving her confidence. I mean, what we want to do is to be able to have Joe walk her by herself, but right. we're doing baby steps to begin with. There was a, you know, kind of a eureka moment where we realized Junie realized I had the leash. Uh, but yet she didn't freeze up, so we knew that that was a small success right there. How does it feel, Joe? I tell you what, it's shocking. I never saw this coming, and it just happened. Wow! You, she actually looks happy right now. Yeah. Forgotten terriers Apple and Zuzu have been taught their names and how to sit. Now Victoria wants to encourage the kids to get more involved with the dogs. I thought it would be really good to use Abby and Spencer because it really is about making it a game, making it fun, playing, and Terrier Mixers love doing that. I want to train these dogs to come to you when you call them. Bubbles, Bubbles, come. Oh, Zuzu. Zuzu is very much more motivated by animals in the ground or sounds that she hears. <laughs> wow. Good, a little raised note. Terriers like squeaky high sounds. It's the sound of prey. So when I really wanted to get her attention, I was going to squeak. So I'm calling their names and I'm telling them, come. Apple, Zuzu, come. Good. And I'm rewarding them with treats. Abby, I want you to call them to come to you and step back as you're doing it. Apple, Zuzu, come. Get Zuzu's attention. Zuzu. Do a little squeak. Apple Zuzu, come! Running away can make it a bit more exciting because they love to chase. Oh, good! Good, good pups! Spencer, can you back up? Run up behind that bush, okay? Apple Zuzu, come! It was fun playing with the puppies because they have so much energy. It was fun to just run with them and they're to chase. And that simple game, I 
do all the time. Apple Zuzu, come! I'd like you to play this game with the dogs whenever you can. Try and find as many ways as you can to motivate them. I think this is going to help the dogs chew less, dig less, and if they get taken out for their daily walks, as I've advised, I think those dogs will be much happier. The stare is a threat. Aversion is not. Dog trainer Victoria Stillwell has helped bring the divided Shelton family together. Is it working? Yeah. For the next few days, the family will continue training without her. Come on, Ginny B. But before she goes, she has a new task for the boys. From now on, you and Spencer are going to be doing the feeding. I want to show Junie B, not only are you the source of treats, you're also the main source of food. With Joe and Spencer being the primary feeders, Junie B is going to look forward to their presence a lot more. They are going to be the source of all the good tasty things she gets. Should I look down or not look down? Just don't look down at her. As well as the boys feeding Junie B, Victoria has some other instructions for the family. All right. The most important thing, Spencer and Joe, is that you have to carry on developing that relationship with Junie B. I would like you to spend more time with Apple and Zuzu. You have to build up that common language with them. Good luck. Thank you. And I'll return. OK. Thank Bye. you, Victoria. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> No guns, no pointy fingers. Okay. It's day one without Victoria, and Spencer and his friend Samuel are keen to keep up with the training. Touch. Good girl. Jun Junie B is on her best behavior, and so are the boys. Good girl. All right, that was good. See? Good job. Good job. As long as you invite her in, let her know that she's your friend. It's good. Good girl. The children are also keeping up with the training with Apple and Zuzu. With all the activity, there's no time for the dogs to indulge in their digging habit. Good girl. Apple, Zuzu, come. Got to find him. Good girl. You like these treats, don't you? Good work. With everything a breeze, Victoria checks in on the progress. Let's check on the Shelton family and see how they've been doing. Good girl. Can you get a glance here and there and see what she's doing? She's fine. She's not paying attention to us. Spencer and Joe are taking charge of Junie B's feeding. Uh-oh, I heard some skittishness. With the boys around, she's still nervous, but she's able to eat her full meal. Touch. Joe and Spencer work every technique to try and make Junie B more comfortable. Touch. Good girl. The men of the household are going from strength to strength. But Andrea is struggling with Victoria's instruction to stop being the source of treats. Let me try. You can't, Mom. You can't give her the treat. Oh. Abby chastises me anytime I even think about giving Junie B a treat. Junie. Junie. Let's try it again. So we've had to back off from that. And, and I'm the world's worst, so she's got her eyes on me. Watch me. Joe is really starting to build that relationship with Junie B, and that is fantastic. Not too shabby. Hey. Later in the day, Joe and Andrea move the training to the couch. Purposely not looking her in the eye. And I think that's good. Success. Look here, Junie. Is it easier if you just jump across? Go, go across. But is Junie B ready to take a leap of faith? Watch me. Wow. Good girl, Junie. See, nothing's going to happen. Nothing but well, good. Well, now we've yeah. settled in. That's settling in. Wow. Junie B is on Joe's lap, and she's really relaxed. You want to stay with Daddy? She didn't even go to Andrew when she called her. Good for you, Jim. I'm happy for you. I think he's beginning to win her heart. But no sooner has Junie B warmed up to Joe when things take a turn for the worse. And he misses. Oh. Oh.
I tried the, the leashing technique with Juni and it wasn't that successful and it was it was an act of frustration. She could sense that other hand coming over her shoulders and uh, she was skittish and she was backing away. Wow, she has good eyes. Mm. Joe, you gotta be patient, otherwise Junie B is gonna pick up on your frustration. Joe is unable to leash Junie B, and Andrea has to step in. That hurt, that hurt the ego. Outside on the walk, the consequences of Joe's failure are apparent. Oh, she's very nervous. Come on, Junie. All right, no, Mom. we've lost it. Come here, Junie. Uh-oh. Once again, Junie B digs her heels in. Let's come on. If a dog is fearful, you can't show any kind of anger or frustration, otherwise it's gonna make the dog more anxious. Is Joe back to square one? You think you could walk her without me at all? I don't think she'd go out the door. It's time for Victoria to head back to the Sheltons. Victoria is returning to the Shelton family to reinforce her training. Are you? You haven't just done this just for my benefit. Oh, it wasn't just for you. It was for my benefit. Progress, wow. When I first met Junie B and I saw how scared she was and how her intense or aggressive response was, I thought, well, this is going to take a long time to solve. But I think the desensitization process that we've been doing with Joe and Spencer has worked so well. She's come through it very quickly, and now she's much more relaxed. I know you are having frustration, Joe, leashing Junie B. Uh, tell me about frust the frustration you are having. I guess a lot of it has to do with just the physical Position, placement. Yeah. Um, it's just Junie and me. And he misses. <gasps> oh. You I couldn't. It was very visible the way my arm was coming mm -hmm. around. If you can change your body position a little bit, mm -hmm. so that you're like this, sort of in a lateral position to you, so right. her body is like this. Then you've got her head and you're not, she doesn't see that. Good girl. There we go. Oh, we did it. She's such a good girl. Let's just try that lateral position. Sure. Okay, see if we can do. And again, I think the most important thing with this is just to not get frustrated. Right. And it was just torn up, so. Right. Oh, I nearly did it. Good girl. Very good. Good girl. Lovely. That was easy. That was perfect. How is this feeling for you? This is a good feeling, Victoria. I mean, this is uh, this is what a dog owner is supposed to be able to do, right? Well, Andrew, what does this mean for you? You know what? I'm happy that Joe's happy. That's the biggest thing. It's amazing to see that. I'm, months ago, she wouldn't even do this. She would run away, bark. But now, obviously, she's comfortable. And she's sitting in there, and my dad's able to pet her, just like my mom and sister can do. This is so wonderful to see. You guys are like a family. Again, there's no divide, no boys versus girls. And, you know, it's beautiful. Look, she's asleep. Isn't that wonderful? Mm -hmm. Oh, thank you. Junie B is like a different dog. She has finally relaxed. Thank you, Victoria. Okay. You've been great. Thank you so much. I definitely understand now what the boys were going through. I would like to say to Victoria, thank you for all that you've done. Your miracle work. I definitely feel that the barrier between boys versus girls has been broken down. Uh, thank you. All right, you're so welcome. Good luck. Bye. Thank you. Bye-bye. Bye-bye. I'm really excited about the way Joe and Spencer are reacting toward the dog. You're much you're much nicer when you come into the room now. Okay, now are you glad we got the dog? Absolutely. <laughs> I am committed to doing what we have to do with Junie B. I'm already seeing improvement, and so that's huge. The family need to keep training, and they keep on needing to build Junie B's confidence. If they do that, they're going to have a long and happy life together. When I left the Shelton family, the divisions in the household had gone. And I'm pleased to see that since then, they've continued to make progress. 
Junie. Yeah, this is just the leash. See ya. Joe's done a great job winning Junie B's confidence. Nervous dogs can find even the smallest things a stressful experience. But if Joe keeps on leashing her like this, eventually Junie B won't even flinch. Doing good. Yeah, she's got a good healthy tail wag going, Spence. You're right. The fact that Joe and Spencer can now walk Junie B without Abby or Andrea even being present is a major achievement. Since Victoria's left, Apple and Zuzu have just turned into great dogs. Apple and Zuzu, come! My mom and my sister used to not mess with Apple and Zuzu, but they've turned that around. The training has really got me more engaged with these dogs. Thanks for watching. If you love It's Me or the Dog and want more dog training tips and tricks, visit my official site positively.com. And if you're interested in learning more about becoming a dog trainer, check out the Victoria Stillwell Academy. Links to both sites are in the description. I'll see you online.